It's Hop Along Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And appearing as that laughable old character, California, is Andy Clyde. Now to our story, Range War. The rolling green range north of the Bar 20 had a look of peace about it as Hopalong Cassidy guided his white horse along the cottonwood bottom toward Cy Ottoman's ranch house. It was the time of year that usually brought peace and contentment to Hoppy and the Bar 20 gang, but this year it was different. There was a worried look on Hoppy's face as he hitched Topper to the rail and walked up to Cy Ottoman's door. Hi, you in there? Ah, oh, Cassidy. <laughs> Morning, Si. Morning. Yeah, what's on your mind? Well, I might be able to talk better sitting down. Oh, sure, sure. Come in, come in. Here's a chair over there. Thanks. Ah, that's better. Ah, tell me, Si, how's your spring roundup coming? Wound her up yesterday. Your tally's all in? Yep. Why? Well, uh... <clears throat> well, let me see. How do I do this diplomatically? What kind of a scheme you cooking up this time? Sigh. I know you're still hot under the collar about that deal I put over last fall, Oh, but... hogwash. I was a darn fool. And you got to the man with the money first with them bar 20 cars. <laughs> it ain't that that I'm hot about, Cassidy. It's something else. What's that, Sigh? I'm beginning to think you got some mighty ambitious line riders. Meaning what? Meaning about a hundred head of my stock didn't answer for roll call at my roundup. I reckon they strayed too close to the bar 20 line. You know, uh, that's interesting. You denying it? I sure am. That's why I'm here. Huh? We're short a hundred head, too. I thought they might have showed up on your tally. Oh, well, what do you reckon it could... Oh, wait a minute. Uh, come in. Morning, sir. And hop along, Cassidy. Just the gents I want to see. <laughs> well, how are you, Jess? Hi, Jess. Didn't expect to see you two sitting down over the peace pipe, especially since that little deal last fall. Never mind last fall, Jess Hendricks. It's over and done with. Oh, Lordy. What did you fall into? <laughs> Cattle dip. I know I smelled a high heaven. My clothes are clean soaked with it. Ain't no one else dipping, I know. Just picked up a bunch of steers from Texas, and I ain't taking chances with Texas fever in my herd. Uh, I'm glad you brought up the subject of cattle, Si, because that's why I come. Just got my final tally sheets and, uh... And you're short a hundred ed. Oh, you got them, Cassidy. I knew them darn critters straight onto somebody's range. Wait a minute. I haven't got them, Jess. Huh? Then how did you know because about them? Because Si and I came up short, too. hundred head apiece? Uh, more or less. Mm-hmm. I guess there's only one answer to that one. Rustlers? Yeah. Here's them nesters, that's who it is. The Sweetwater Valley? Sure, there weren't no rustling around here before the valley was open to homesteaders, was there? Now, ah, wait a shake, Jess. Don't jump to conclusions. Well, what do you aim to do? Well, let's keep it quiet for a few days. Snoop around a little before we start any rustler talk. Hi, Joe, if it is them nested devils, I'll show them a new use for a long rope. And I don't think you'll be alone, Si. The nesters over at Sweetwater Valley have gone in for rustling. I think this county is in for a first-class range war. <laughs> A week has passed since Hoppy called at Cy Ottoman's ranch house, a week that has seen rumors and muttered hints. And the rustler talk swept through the section like a prairie fire, all of it directed at the nesters, the homestead and small ranchers of Sweetwater Valley. It was all suspicion, though, at least until a young nester named Bert Larrimore called at the office of Henry Weatherby at the State Bank in Sweetwater. 
fifty, seventy-five, one hundred, two, three, four, five. How's that look to you, Mr. Weatherby? Uh, looks like cash money, Bert. <laughs> uh, I expect we'll be having a little celebration tonight, eh? Burning that mortgage. Yeah. Uh, would I be too nosy if I inquired about... Uh... <laughs> you mean, where'd I get the money? No, I'll be glad to tell you, Henry. Aunt of mine in New Jersey. She passed away a few weeks ago. She left it to me. I see. Does that answer your question, Mr. Weatherby? Yeah. Yeah, Bert, I suppose it does. <laughs> Five hundred dollars cash? Well, that's right, Hoppy. Hmm. Well, I don't know, Johnny. Maybe Bert Larimore did have an aunt least. Well, Weatherby checked it. Only relatives he has are a couple of cousins in San Francisco. Six months ago, Larimore didn't have a dime to his name. How do you know? Well, I... I had a pretty good reason, Hoppy. And what's that? A small matter of fifty dollars he stole from me. To cover a bet he made at the North Fork Saloon one night. Hmm. So now it comes out. That's why you... Yeah, that's why I broke up with his sister. I see. The stockmen are ready to move right now. Well, they're crazy. Maybe. But all they needed was that Larimore thing. What kind of evidence is that? So unless they get rich, does that mean that every homesteader in Sweetwater Valley is rustling cattle? The stockmen seem to think so, and it's good enough for me. Well, I'm short as many head as they are, and I don't think so. And you better not think so either, Johnny, until we got proof. Well, maybe I'd better remind you about that little mix-up we had when you first came to the Bar 20. When that batch of self-righteous gunslingers came out here ready to lynch you for something you had nothing to do with. Just because you'd done a spell in prison. Well, I... Well, what? I'm wrong, Hoppy. I know it. But all that talk in town kind of gets under a fellow's skin. Yeah, I suppose it does. But there are two sides to the wrestling business, Johnny. First you got to steal them, then you got to sell them. I've had California out checking every shipping yard from Council City to Alderville, looking for blotched brands. There hasn't been a suspicious critter shipped out of this country for a year. Claremore got his money from stolen cows. Where'd he sell them? Hmm. Well, that's something to think about, all right. Well, I'm with you, Hoppy. But we better speak our piece because they're not going to hold off much longer. Come on, let's saddle up. Where are we going? I want to ride into North Fork and take a look around. And on the way, we can stop in at Larimore's. Maybe you can give us some more details on that ant of his in New Jersey. You go on in, Johnny. Topper's got a loose hind shoe. I want to take a look at it. Okay. We stay in here? No. Tell them we're riding on into North Fork tonight. That suits me. Johnny McIver. Hello, Marcella. Come on in, Johnny. Thanks. Poppy will be long in a minute. This is quite a surprise. Yeah. Bert in? He's been staying in North Fork for the last few days. Oh. You're looking fine, Johnny. Well, I was going to say the same about you. You're still as... Well, as pretty as ever. Thanks. I... I guess I didn't keep my promise. I said I wouldn't bother you anymore. I mean, that, I mean after that business with Bert. I'd like to forget that, Johnny. Well, so would I. Marcella, do you... Do you reckon we... Yes, Johnny? Oh, that's Hoppy. I'm going to have to take Topper to the blacksmith in town. Oh, uh, evening, Miss Larimore. Mr. Cassidy. Bert's in town. Oh, well, I guess we'd better be riding along then. What did you want to see him about? Oh, Hoppy, let's not... I think she has a right to know, Johnny. What is it? It's about that money Bert paid off your mortgage with. I, I see. Now, listen, Marcella. It seems we always get around to money, doesn't it? What business is it of yours if Bert has some luck and pays off the mortgage? That's a good question, and I'll answer it. There are a lot of ranchers around here who like to jump to conclusions when a nester shows up with money he can't account for. Especially when every ranch in this district is short on their cattle tallies. So that's it. You think he's a rustler? I'm only telling you what the rest of them think. Where'd he get that money, Marcella? He said he made a business deal in the East. 
You believe him? Of course I believe him. I guess I was wrong about you, Johnny. Oh, I wish I knew why you hate him. I wish I knew why you won't stop until you've ruined him. Listen to me, Marcella. Wait a minute, Johnny. Miss Larimore, whether you know it or not, we're hanging on the ragged edge of a cantle war around here. Of course I know it. Every homesteader in the valley scared to death putting up barricades around ranch houses, waiting for a bunch of your murdering cattlemen to ride now, up... Now, let me finish. I've heard all I want to hear. You're tickled to death about this rustling business because it gives you a handy reason to shoot up Sweetwater Valley and run us out of here. All right. You want to know the one way we can stop it? We? Yes, we. Johnny and I are fighting it just as hard as you are. There's only one way to stop this thing before it blows up in our faces, before you and Bert and a lot of innocent people get hurt. Go on. There won't be any range war if we take the excuse away. We prove there's nothing wrong with the money Bert turned up with, and if we run down the thief who's got those cattle. And believe me, Miss Larimore, that's the only way we can stop it. That's the blacksmith shop over there. Oh, he's closed up for the night. Ah, he sleeps in the back. Let's ride around the back entrance, see if we can get him up. We might be riding back to bar 20 tonight, and I don't want a lame horse on my end. Pull up, Johnny. What is it? Look. Over there by the back window. Where? Oh. Oh, yeah. He's lighting a cigarette. Did you get a look at his face? That's funny. Wonder what he's doing in town. Who? Smoke Bledsoe. He used to run a profitable business down in Texas. What do you mean? Killing people. Oh. He's a professional gunman. Well, wait till he's gone, and I want to take a look inside that blacksmith shop. <clears throat> Maybe we'd better take the door off its hinges. I'll put the bar in deeper. I think we can pry it off. Okay. Here, I'll give you a hand. Right. <clears throat> There she goes. Now, let's see what Mr. Bledsoe was up to. Huh? Look. Yeah? Is he? Yeah, he's dead. Bledsoe doesn't walk away from him until he's sure of that. Let me light a match. Careful. Hold it down. That's it. Look. Under the desk there, those papers. Yeah. Hmm. What is it? Circle H. Sunflower, Lazy C, Flying O. Brands? Yeah, drawings of brands. And a funny thing. What's that? Every brand here belongs to a nester in Sweetwater Valley. I think our friend on the floor there made up an order of branding irons. Then someone thought he might talk too much. So he had Bledsoe nail him through that window there. Well, better get the sheriff, huh? Not yet. Well, what about Bledsoe? We can get him later. I want to give Mr. Bledsoe a free reign right now. You never can tell, Johnny. He just might lead us to the man he's working for. It's almost midnight now as Hoppy mounts the stairs of the rickety North Fork Hotel and walks down the hallway into a room full of angry cattlemen. Now, here's the figures, everybody. Now, Niels, I can calculate there's over a thousand head missing. A thousand head? Now, wait a minute. Now, the question is, what can we do about it? Well, you Just a minute, boys. Hey, I'd like to stick my oar in, if you don't mind, being a paid-up member of the Cattlemen's Association. I think you're all going off half-cocked. Now, wait a minute. What do you mean? Wars are pretty much alike. Well, they're cattle wars of the big kind. I don't like to see rangeland fenced off any more than you do. Well? But those nesters in Sweetwater Valley have a legal right to that land until someone proves a charge against them. Oh, well, I don't listen. Oh, now, wait a minute, Hoppy. Oh, hello, Jess. Boys, I just got here in time to hear what Cassidy said. I want you to know I felt the same way until a few minutes ago. You want proof, Hoppy. I've got it for you. All right, Jess. I want you all to show up at my ranch house tomorrow night at 8 and come ready for a fight. What is it, Jess? A little bird I found, Hoppy. 
The little bird that's going to sing for the boys when I tell him to. I'll be ready to listen. I don't think you'll be disappointed. All right, Si, let's get on with it. You bet. If the shooting's going to start tomorrow night, we've got some planning to do. All right. Well, I'll be there Hello, Larimore. Huh? Oh, huh. Johnny McIver. Mind if I have a drink with you? Yeah, I mean, no, not at all. Not at all, Johnny. Here, let me buy you one, eh? Well, <laughs> times have changed, huh? Uh, Last time I saw you, you didn't have the price of a small buttermilk. Yeah, yeah, I had a little luck, Johnny, a little luck. Uh, Sam, Sam, bring me a couple more of these, will you? Nice to see you again, Johnny, nice to see you again. Thanks. You're looking a little thin, Bert. Huh? Something bothering you? Oh, no. No, things are going great, Johnny, going great. No. No, I'll take part of that back. Something has been bothering me. One thing. What's that? This. Well, $50. Look, let's say I borrowed it, eh? And here's five more for interest. Well, I don't know if I should. Go ahead. Take it. Oh, here's the drinks. Now, oh, here's to you, Johnny. Same to you, Bert. <laughs> Thanks, Bert. Uh Uh-oh. What is it? A friend of mine waiting outside. So long, Bert. Uh, Take care of yourself. What is it, Hoppy? Meeting just broke up. The shooting starts tomorrow night. Where does that leave us? I don't know. What about Larimore? Oh, I was just starting to work on him when you gave me the sign. Look. Fifty dollars. Told me he was paying off his loan. What's the matter? Smell that, Bill. Cattle dip. Wait. Wait a minute. Yeah, me too. Only one ranch around here is using cattle dip right now. Jess Hendricks. But why is he paying Larimore? Why is he... Quick, around the corner. What is it? It's Hendricks. Get into the alley. What is it, Jess? What do you want? Take it easy. It is it? Yeah, it's all set. You're going to sing your solo tomorrow night at my place. Loud and long. Be sure you got it note for note. Listen, Hendrick, I'm getting scared. They'll kill me. There's no easier way of making $15,000, Sonny. You'll have to take your chances. Bledsoe's here, and he'll hustle you out of the state before the nesters know what happened. Okay, Jess. You better run on home now and practice. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Double-crossing little snake. He'll get paid off, all right. Smoke! Yeah? You saw Larimore, all right? Yeah. Got him tagged? Like he was already on a marble slab. Tomorrow night at my place. I'll sit him at the right-hand window on the east side of the house, right? Yeah. Remember, the red lamp... The red lamp. And don't miss. I ain't likely to. I ain't missed for 20 years. Good. I'm counting on you. I'll go with you as far as the corner. Then remember, I don't want to be seen with you from now on. I got you. Now get this straight. I don't want any slip-ups. We do everything just as we... Phew. That was quite a scene. Yeah, Judas and the 20 pieces of silver. Huh? Never mind. I guess Larimore was just practicing when he stole your $50, Johnny. Now he's selling out every rancher in the valley. Hmm. What was that business about the red lamp? I don't know. I suppose we'll have to go to the meeting tomorrow night to find out. All right, boys, I promised fireworks tonight, and I brought them. Johnny. Yeah? 
Sneak around back of the crowd and keep your hand on your gun. Gotcha. All right, all right. Well, come on, well, let's have What's it, up, yes, All right, here she is. Hey, what's that paper you got there? This piece of paper here accounts for your missing cattle. It's a signed confession involving every nester in Sweetwater Valley. What? A signed confession from the nester? The man who signed it knows his life ain't worth a dime, but he agreed to come here when I promised him we'd see to it he got across the state line safe. Come on in, Larimore. Wait, first Larimore. Sit down in that chair there next to the window. Okay, Jess. Okay. Now, I'm not going into details tonight, Larimore. What these men are interested in is, first, what happened to the cattle? Oh, it's in the statement there. We run them up through Winchester Pass onto Boulder Flat. You'll find them there. What about the brands? We watched them. Put on our own marks. I see. Who's we? Me. The rest of the nesters. How many of them? All of them. All All of them. Yes. Can you prove that, Larimer? I don't have to. Look at the cattle. The brands will tell you who's in on it. We're planning to run them up north next month. Ship them out of Montana. Well, you fellas need any more proof before we leave? Yeah, Jess. I do. What do you mean? Okay, Cassidy. If you want to ask the boy some questions, go ahead. Thanks. Light's kind of bad in here. First, let me move this lamp over here by the window. Go ahead. Lamps. Wait, the red lamps. Uh, Jess. Yeah? Wait a minute. Just moving the lamp here. Never mind the lamp. The light's good enough. What's the matter, Hoppy? Got the jitters? Yeah, and I don't want to question the boy. I want to question you. Me? What do you leave? Only take a minute, Jess. Since we seem to be using this chair by the window as a witness stand, why don't you sit in it? Go on, Bert. Give him your seat. Listen, Cassidy, I ain't no mood. But... What's the matter, Jess? You scared us? Shut up, Cy. Jess, I'm asking you to sit down in that chair. I'll answer any questions from here. I... The next one will come closer. Sit in that chair. I don't get you. What's Keep your seats, everybody. You're supposed to be after the truth. So am I. If you give me two minutes, I'll get it for you. Jess, I think you better do what Hoppy said. Yes, yes, what did Hoppy say? Okay. I'll sit in the chair. Make yourself comfortable, Jess. I'm comfortable. Go ahead. All right. First off, I'll tell you that Larimore's confession is all right. Except for one thing. What's that? It's a lie. Well, what do you mean? Ah, it's simple enough. Jess has a connection in the state capitol. Sweetwater Valley is his if he can get the nesters out. Johnny and I uncovered that one this afternoon. You can prove that, Chesity? We won't have to. Why not? You are going to confess to it. Confess to it? So to get on with the story, Jess figured the best way to get the nesters out would be to start a range war. Range war? He hired a bunch of thugs from out of the state and ran off our cattle just before a roundup. He went to the blacksmith in town and had him make duplicates of every brand along the Sweetwater. And mark the cows after he got them up to Boulder Flat. You're out of your head, Jess. Take it easy, Jess. You're going to confess to that one, too. Then he had one of his gunslingers kill the blacksmith to shut him up. Well, what about Larimore? Maybe you'd better ask him about that, Si. About the $15,000 Jess is paying him for the song he sang tonight. What about that, Jess? I suppose I'm going to confess to that, too. That's right. Now stand back, everyone, while we listen to Jess's confession. Johnny. Yeah? Pick up that red lamp and set it down next to the window over there. The lamp? No! No, don't! Easy, Jess. Just let us know when you're ready to talk. Over here, Johnny. You taught us a lesson we won't forget for a while. <laughs> I hope so, Si. Hmm, the boys are running Larimore down to the jail. Yeah, who's that gal out there with Johnny? Larimore's sister. I expect she and Johnny have some talking to do. Jess. Yeah? We better get going. Sheriff will want to hear what you have to say. 
And besides, Smoke Bledsoe's looking forward to your company. Smoke? In jail? <laughs> Been there since morning, Jess. Charged with killing the blacksmith. But I still got to hand it to you at that. Even though he wasn't out there waiting with his gun cock, you sure sang a nice song. <laughs> Goodbye from Hopalong Cassidy. We hope you'll be back with us soon when Hoppy will again bring you more adventure and excitement. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Range War was written by Harold Swanton. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production.